Oh, what is going on, everybody? Hello. It is Pixel Barters here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies, where we left off. You we met are this now, man. <laughs> yes, we met this man. We're not Phoenix Wright taking up the case from eons ago, even though it seems like just yesterday we learned that this case existed, because mm -hmm. it was pretty much two days ago. But we're back. We got to talk to Yuri Cosmos Yeah, eons ago for us Cosmos? breaking Cosmos. the force. Oops, yep, my microphone is a little loose. Yep, oh there we go. <laughs> got to fix it. Hey, for, hey, there we go. Yuri Cosmos. So, as director, what do you do here at the Space Center specifically? Defend peace across the galaxy and promote <laughs> space development in this country! <laughs> Stop making him laugh! <laughs> it's my inspiration. No matter what our first stand on our way, we keep going. For the sake of mankind. I believe I used the word specifically in my question. Yeah. That was very bad. Whoa! Attention all personnel! To your break stations! Prepare for break! Oh, I get it. You just wander around and tell people what to do in a self-important manner. That is exactly right, because I am an important man. My manner is important. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Wright, this man doesn't get sarcasm. Well, there's bound to be some people like that here in the boundlessness of space. What's that? You want to know what it is that makes me important specifically? <laughs> well, very well. I will tell you. I was the essential figure at the Hat One Project. You are proceed to be... Appropriately impressed. Now go ahead, have at it. <laughs> I might be more impressed if I knew what he did for it specifically. That angle, though. Hero pose. So intense. <laughs> oh. Could you tell us what you know about the incident from the other day? Refuse. <laughs> <laughs> what? Explaining is a job for common folk, not the director of the center of the cosmos. Uh. My testimony, which should go down in space history. I'll be heard in the courtroom. What? So does that mean you'll be taking the stand tomorrow? That is correct. I will be the most glorious witness in the history of mankind. <laughs> I'm not sure if he really understands what being a witness is all about. I don't think he does either. Looks like Director Cosmos is the type that only talks about what he wants to talk about. Then let's at least try to ask him about the things he might be willing to open up about. Mm. Like, about Hat 1, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, hero you, apparently. <laughs> the Hat 1 project was a rocket that was launched into space seven years ago, correct? And despite numerous problems, it somehow made its way back home? Why is it always a span of seven years that things happen? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> you know what hmm. I mean? I suppose it is part of my job to educate ignorant folk, young folk like you. Ignorant. Hey. <laughs> very well, I will report you to the complete story of the Hat 1 project. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. After the movie theater we go, I have a documentary set for it. <laughs> Had one's noble mission was to collect samples from an asteroid. And Mr. Stubbock was the pilot for that flight. Eventually, the Hat One reached its planned orbit. Hmm. Oh, but from where I launched the Hope Probe forward towards the... The Hope... From where I launched the Hope Probe towards the asteroid belt. <laughs> from there, the Hope Probe began its long, lonely journey in the far reaches of space. Then, after a terrifying struggle, the Hat One returned safely to Earth. That struggle was when nah, the incident. Nah, 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 nah. Oh. <laughs> that struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One miracle occurred, right? Correct. And it truly was a miracle. Of course, they just had to turn the audio into a movie. As for the Hope Probe, it did eventually arrive safely at its destination. It obtained a few samples of the asteroid, but it returned to Earth a few, about a few days ago. So, what kind of samples are they? Like aliens? What's in them? <laughs> Life. The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back that day for Terran's murder. Makes sense. We're gonna be, we've had no time to inspect the samples to everything that has occurred. But this puts our space for the program ahead of other countries by several years! That's quite impressive. Yeah. I guess this guy isn't just as, just, just a loudmouthed braggart after all. In the golden age of space development, our predecessors were successful in bringing a moon rock back. That is the greatest achievement in the history of this space center. The public fell in love with the space in all of its glorious potential. Ooh. A moon rock. Uh, <laughs> a, a moon rock, Even huh? Phoenix is sucking. I remember that being big. Our endeavors with the moon rock lives on in our work with those asteroid sappers. I want to be bestowed new hopes and dreams for the future upon mankind once again. Well that then. That's my mission. As the man who stands at the center of the cosmos. Uh, I hear there's lots of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say the results can pot potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. What? Bite your tongue, it's not for anything so base as money or politics. It's all for the brilliant future that awaits mankind. And for all, my illustrious mission. 
Uh. With the recent budget cuts, my staff tells me finances are tight, but I won't hear it. <laughs> uh, I guess even a space program has to watch its budget. Yeah. By the way, you seem awfully knowledgeable about this kind of thing, Athena. Huh? Oh, w well, you know, I thought I'd better brush up for the case. Is that so? <laughs> huh. Well, I won't be on my way, as you can see. I am very busy and very important man. Galactic scooter, fire up the main engine. Max battle speed and engage. <laughs> you just let the freaking segue. Oh. That thing is surprisingly fast. They are surprisingly fast. Yeah. I guess you better get going too. You bet. Let's make it so. All right. Where are we going to? Obviously. The board. <laughs> the boarding it's the lounge. the same birds. They will always come back to haunt me. <laughs> that was great. Can you strap me in that thing? I'm ready to go. December 19th Cosmos Space Center boarding lounge. So this is where Mr. Tan was murdered. Huh. Was it the giant fucking seahorse in the window? I know, right? Yeah, this is the lounge. Let's see that diagram the police made again. Right. Now we're in the main building here on the right side on the third floor. Clay and Mr. Starbuck fled here from launch pad one after the explosion. You would have known me without express permission. We're Mr. Starbuck's lawyers. We've come to investigate. Sorry, nobody gets here without permission. Not even the police superintendent. Jeez. <laughs> Can't have Dr. Fulbright getting mad at me. So he's got the Fulbrighters here, huh? Mm. Oh, I forgive him, man. <laughs> yeah, he's in the launch pad one corridor. Go get clinched from him and then we'll talk. Leave it to me. I'm great at getting intel out of Detective Fulbright. She is. Let's see. What trick should I use on him today? I don't know if I should be grateful or afraid. <laughs> Both. So, to get to the launch pad one corridor... You just have to go through that door with the blue rocket on it, I think. Wait. That door... Mm. It looks awfully familiar. Good eye there, boss. This is the door Clay and Mr. Starbuck used during their escape from the launch pad. Ah, that explains it. Yep. The fingerprint system has been deactivated, so I think we can just pass through. Now come on, let's go! Is that the case? Oh, okay. Alright. Uh, okay, this is the basic stuff. Uh... Can't examine, so all right. I guess we'll just yep. go barging into the launch one <laughs> pad, launch pad one corner. Whoa. That it's cleaning. Is a robot, robot, ro robot vacuum. Robo janitor. Robo vacu. So this is it, huh? This is the corridor the two of them used to their escape. Yep, it's the only thing connecting launch pad one with the main building. I see police tape down at the other end. Oh, I guess we'll be looking at the launch pad. After the explosion, the whole corridor must have been filled with smoke. And the launch pad itself is probably a sea of flames. Must have been pretty scary for them. Now, where could Detective Fulbright be? Hey, I think that's him over there! Hello! <laughs> oh, hmm. What should I do? Which path is the path of justice? <laughs> he seems to be lost. That's funny. This corridor is a straight shot. <laughs> hey, it's you two lawyer people. Welcome to the Space Center. Jesus. Enjoying your relaxing day off, are you? No. Yeah, for a little rocket sightseeing. No. <laughs> We're here to investigate the scene the same as you. Do you have any info to share? Boss, if he acts all reluctant to give us information, we hit him with the whatever shall we do act. I'm sure he'll fall for it. Got it? Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? <laughs> info on the case, huh? Oh, oh, oh. All right, I'll gladly share some with you. Huh? What? What just happened? It's because of me. Trust me, <laughs> I have a way with detectives. I don't know why. <laughs> they just gravitate towards me like a leech, <laughs> taking my money. <laughs> Anyways, the, as as you were saying, Fulbright, detectives and lawyers seeing the truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you in info bandits. I'm a generous. I'm in a generous mood today. Uh, but uh, I don't know. There's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. I... What? Well, we need information, so let's run with it. If you say so. All right, sir. The crime scene. What's up? Give me the deets. Detective Fulbright, can you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard and we can't get in. 
Oh, whatever shall we do? That's an easy one. I'll let them know. I'll let them know over there that you win. Investigate to your heart's content. Take a week if you need it. A month even. Um. <laughs> shall I say some stacks to live in? What the? One of the men gives me a mean neck rub. What? what? Uh, no, that that's okay. But thanks. Yeah. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. What is going on? Detective Fulbright is acting sickeningly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. Hey. Do you think he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case, it's making our lives way easier. Yeah, I guess, but... What happened exactly? <laughs> Why are you the way you are? Probably... You were at the Space Center at the time of the incidents, weren't you, Detective? That's right, I was here at the security assignment. The police are required to secure rocket launches now? I didn't know that. And, um, um, yes, well, you know us. To serve and protect. Ha 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 ha. The explosion occurred while I was here on duty, so I started leading the evacu evacuation. <laughs> He's leaving out a lot of details, but okay. Could you tell us more about what happened? Of course, I'm moving off on the second floor of the main building. Right for that, the one over in the launch pad one also blew sky high. <laughs> so I immediately instructed the visitors and employees to evacuate the shelter to the shelter. The shelter? That's right, there's an evacuation shelter in the basement of the space center. Hmm. Right down there. In the red. That is not blown up, though. Don't be mistaken <laughs> by the color red. The whole thing, boom. <laughs> SF, accidents and emergencies and the like. So, where were you when the first bomb went off? I was on duty on the fourth floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. The elevator wasn't working on account of the explosion. Hmm. And the stairs on the second floor were destroyed, so we couldn't go that way. Oh, jeez. Then it... W <laughs> and wasn't it impossible to get down to the basement shelter? No, we know an emergency ladder from the fourth floor window to escape that way. <laughs> no. It was a folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable, but at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I left to take another look around and for any other survivors. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down to and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal. But climbing down an emergency ladder kind of sounds fun. Fun? <laughs> You've seen disaster, child. <laughs> Thank you for your answers, Detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment. I have some more information to share with you. More? Uh, it... But don't tell Prosecutor Blackwell, okay? What? It... Wow. And Prosecutor Blackwell usually has you on a short leash, too. What's well, never on? mind that. Ha ha ha. I thought you should know that there was a witness. Oh, that boy. That is a big thing to tell us. Why, why are you... Why? Could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing. The what? witness was a Space Center employee who was on the fourth floor. While she was climbing down, she looked through a window into the third floor lounge. So, she was looking into the crime scene from the outside? That's right, it was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Not that I know what she saw exactly yet, though. You don't? But that's the most important thing of all. Ha <laughs> ha Don't you worry, I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be somewhere here in the space center, after all. You might even want to hear yourself. Don't ask me questions now, she's mine. Uh, a fourth floor employee, huh? All right, thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. Gee, you sure are being cooperative, Detective. A little too cooperative, even. Yes, well, <laughs> actually, I, uh, uh, something you can't talk about? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Ha, <laughs> ha, I'm fine. <laughs> well, well, I'll be on my way now. Ha, <laughs> ha, bye. What in the... There's some fishy going yeah. on here. Yeah. What was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm going to get out of him the next time I see him. Uh, okay. I'm not so sure he'll talk about it, though. Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the boarding lounge. That was weird. Yeah, it was. Usually he's all like, Nope, I'm not going to tell you anything. And then we took him, but what? He, he was just giving up the beans. Yeah. You're on to something. Yeah, you too. Detective Fulbright has granted you permission to investigate. <laughs> you okay he also there? said I should bring you some snacks to give you a neck rub too if you'd like. Oh, uh, that that's all right, but thank you for the offer. Well, time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now let's see. Where's that diagram again? So, this letter's on the third floor of the main building. Mm -hmm. According to Apollo, this is where he believes the third party killed his friend. God, that's a rough sentence. <laughs> well, let's stop the recap and start looking for traces of this third person, then. You read my mind, Athena. We'll make that our first priority. There's just one problem, though. This room... It's just so big. Don't worry. We can use this to help us. 
A space center pamphlet for tourists? Yep. Picked it up at the entrance. The maps inside should come in handy. Let's see. Yep, here it is. Map of the lounge. Okay. That's a lounge, all right. <laughs> That's a lounge. <laughs> this is the door we went through to talk to Detective Fulbright. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the door with the fingerprint recognition lock. Mm hmm Well, I guess this map will make things a little easier. Yeah, it will. Space Center map. Cool. All right. Yeah, no more excuses. Let's track down the third person. Wait, there's just one more thing. What's that strange creature yeah. moving around outside the <laughs> I'm window? Glad he oh, boss, it's just a holographic image. Oh, yeah, I, I knew that. Oh, that's a relief. There should be a button somewhere in this room to turn the image on and off. That's what it says in the pamphlet, anyway. The only reason you're so eager to start is so that you can push that button, isn't it? What's wrong with that? Let's just look for the button while we're here for clues. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's get investigating. Examine. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an inchworm crossed with the seahorse. Let's look at the giant spinny thing. No matter how I look at it, uh, look at pep up. No matter how I look at it, all I can think of is torture device. Mm. But I guess it's a training device for getting used to zero gravity. Uh oh, he has an <laughs> odd glint in her eye. Oh no! You should think about trying that thing out. <laughs> I should try to stop her, but I'm afraid she'll just outmuscle me. Hey, Mr. Wright, look at that up there. Some kind of fragment? It's stuck in tight. Oh, so that's what that glint was all about. Mm. That color looks familiar. I think it's part of an oxygen tank. I think you're right. But if that's here, it means mm. Clay's tank ruptured after they robbed at the boarding lounge. So Prosecutor Blackwell's theory that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay down the ladder must be wrong. This proves that both of the astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. Hehe. <laughs> Way to go, Apollo. Way to go. Cool. I guess we're not going to take that as evidence then. All right, whatever. I'll look at we're this just, mirror then. I'll look we're at just looking at it. Look, yep, it's up there. A window. It's right next to the holographic image, too. I bet it's here to help people see the stark contrast between reality and virtual reality. Way off. It's this emergency ventilation. You know, to clear smoke from a fire. See? It's pointing out the virtual insanity of reality. Oh, <laughs> goodness, child. The window, the, the virtual window. At first glance, it looks like a peaceful landscape. But then there's that creature. <laughs> God. <laughs> Didn't the Hope Probe go to some planet? Maybe this is what its surface looked like. Looks like Gordy. Oh no, I think it would have made the news <laughs> of this coming a creature like that. <laughs> it did make quite a bit of news though when the probe came back. Yeah, but the Hope Probe didn't even go to a planet, it just went to an asteroid. Boring. It's a big rock kind of thing. Even aliens can't live there. <laughs> Yeah, you tables. know, you know those uh, those like those leafy sea dragons. Yeah, it looks like one of those, but like a snake. <laughs> yeah, because it's not in water; it's just roaming around. It's just, it's just, just walking, just walking on its body. Thing. Walking on its body. Whatever you, whatever you call that. That's some pretty futuristic-looking furniture over there. According to the pamphlet, those are no ordinary chairs. They're like amusement park teacup rides. You can power them yourself. It says. You spin the table, your chair spins, too. Why would anybody want to have something <laughs> like that here? Oh, budget Disneyland? <laughs> it's for astronauts who have trouble with the device on the ceiling. No vertical spins. It says it's a training device that's easy on the eyes and on the body. Can a person really call themselves an astronaut that can't handle zero G? No. <laughs> What that's how, that's how they, 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 they train in, um, in underwater in big Olympic swimming pools for that kind of thing, too. Yeah. The outline. So this is where they discovered Clay. Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let's take a look at the photo. Yep, he's dead. Yep. So he was stretched out like this and... Huh? What's the thing that looks like a thermos? <laughs> That's the thing that Prosecutor, Prosecutor Blackwell mentioned when I was in court with Apollo. He said that it contains asteroid samples. Alright, Dr. Cosmos mentioned something about that too, didn't he? That they were brought back only five days ago by the probe that the Hat-1 launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see? Let's think about that after we've solved the case, okay? Mm. Something tells me someone was after them asteroids. Yeah. Because they keep talking so highly about it. Well, yeah, it's a big, it's a big deal. How about this door? So it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of this room. Well, let's check. 
Drum roll, please. No, okay. Ta-da! This is Base Center Pamphlet. Da -da -da -da. That's my drum roll. That, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're here at this place It says Boarding Lounge 1. Okay. Here are the three doors. Hmm. Let's call them Lefty, Righty, and Downy. People usually say West, East, and South. South? <laughs> south in a case like this, you know. Details, details. Anyway, take a look at the West door. Oh, you already gave up already on the Lefty? <laughs> Jesus, I think. Ro Dedication. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> that door with the rocket icon leads to launch pad one. Okay. I know because it says here on the map, launch pad one corridor. Understood. So that's where we were with the detective. It was filled with smoke after the explosion. Right. Next up, the right hand side of the map, we're east in your world. Righty. Got it. <laughs> that's the door with the satellite dish icon to signify communication, aka the control room. Yep, it definitely says control room. Looks like it has another door on the opposite side. They communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from there. Cool. Fancy. So it's the center of the space center. The space center center, if you will. Does everybody start to talk like Director Cosmos after they've been here a while? <laughs> but it seems that they built a new command center on the sixth floor. That's what they use for the Hat 2 mission, so this control room is empty at the time. I've always wanted to see the inside of a mission control room, and since we're here... I'd love to do that too, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to. What? They want to keep curious kids like you out. No. Oh. <laughs> so the door's protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director can go through. Well, that much security? I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. <laughs> so apparently the lock is also hooked up to a backup generator in case of emergencies. Huh. Okay, this is going to come into play, apparently. Yeah. Okay, what about that last door? This lower door. Oh, excuse me, I mean, south door leads to the elevators. That's pretty self yeah. yeah, this is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Yep, and of course, there was no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. But the elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Correct. <laughs> Well, that's about it for the three muscadors of the boarding lounge. <laughs> Thanks. Understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. That's why I thought we better have a good grip of where, good, good grasp grass. of where we, uh, where all the doors go. <laughs> I like okay. how he didn't even comment on her three muscadors thing. Yeah. He's just like, yep. Well, when your daughter's trucy, I guess he's used to stuff he's like that. He's seen some shit. <laughs> a bright purple sky, plenty of greenery, and a tranquil lake. The idyllic scene stretches as far as the eye can see. It's beautiful, but lacks something to make it truly captivating. Like huh. reality. <laughs> Alright, we know about that door. Uh, let's look at this fucking thing over here. Mm. Whoa. Huh. Moon. Moon ground. stuff. Here's another amazing piece of equipment. We'll walk on the surface of the moon, it says. Oh boy, I want to try it! Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could do mid-air somersaults. We're still on Earth, remember? <laughs> Besides, it's connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I can jump really high. There's a sign on the wall that says very clearly, don't jump too high. Then what good is this thing? Uh, didn't I say in the beginning, walk on the surface of the moon? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what's this? What's this? What's this thing here? This is making is that me, a door? This is making me want to go to the Kennedy Space Center again. It's been years. I've never been there, so... It's here Fancy. in Florida. Yeah, true. What's this? A trap door? It's a trash chute. The cleaning robots throws the garbage out from here. The robots did the cleaning? What a futuristic world we live in. I just hope they don't revolt like they do in science fiction movies. Yeah. No way. All the robots here are very nice. Actually, wasn't there one in the launch pad one corridor? You can go say hi if you want. Absolutely. Let's go say hi to it. Let's go I say hi to it. I absolutely will. But first, let me, uh, what, what's, what's, what's that in the back, I guess? That's great, but uh, there's a shimmy. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take this cover off then. Oh, uh, is that a bullet? What's this? Looks like a metal jelly bean. It's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two or three millimeters in diameter. Let's see. I'd make the caliber dead. Caliber refers to a diameter of a gun's barrel, right? Yes, but I've never heard of a 10 caliber gun before. Yeah. This bullet must be for a special kind of gun. But if you tried firing a bullet I bet this... if you tried firing a bullet this small with a regular size gun. Whoops. 
it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must have been a really small gun. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean, we're in the bottom left on the south, south door side of the room, according to this map. That's pretty far from where Clay's body was. Maybe the police didn't think to look here. Yeah, leave an Detective Fulbright to accidentally hand us the card we need. Huh. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny bullet. And there's been no gun mentioned at all yet. No. Because he died apparently by stabbing. Yeah. So why is there a bullet? Okay, so let me see. I wonder if you can actually more. say hi to the robot or that's just part of the dialogue. Oh, I'm going to go say hi to the robot. <laughs> Don't you worry about no, that. No, I'm just saying I'm hoping that we actually can. Oh, we better be able to. These are apparently oxygen capsules. Cap capsules. Capsules. <laughs> They're for recovery after a training session. I wonder if they can change your voice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Huh? Didn't do a thing. Uh, it's not helium, Athena. It's oxygen. What you <laughs> breathe. Girl, what did they teach you in school? Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, I am going to go. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to Launch Battle One Corridor. I'm gonna talk to this robot. Can we? Nope. No, we can't examine no. or anything. <laughs> no, because it cuts out the examine on here, the red bit. So. That's something that we can't do. I had a feeling it was just dialogue. It oh, well. sucks. How okay. dare you tease so, us like uh, this game? We want to talk to a robot. All right. Um, where's my notes? Still search the crime scene? Okay. Um, I didn't There's know there was much gotta left. got to be more. Right, the only thing that was really left was examining the other door again. So, oh, didn't mean to go back. Hang on. Sweep. Because, I mean, well, there's that window there, yeah. too. Because there was that window. And then the launch pad door. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the launch pad door and then the window. Well, I mean, I'll look at this then. Yeah. This little button over here. wonder what this big knob is for. Looks like the knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I think that's where the similarities end. <laughs> I mean, it's behind a glass pane. What kind of stove would require a knob security like this? Well, the knob is straight up and down, so if it was for a stove, the burner would be off. Right. If it was for a stove. <laughs> Still, I wonder what it really, was, really, really is for. <laughs> Something turned on by a knob that's not a stove? Hmm. How about a rocket engine? If you had to start the engine here, the rocket would take off before I could get in. And I guess we can. All we can say for now is that it's a mystery knob. Okay. How about the Boy, little, she's some... little thing? <laughs> yeah, she is. So this is the finger recognition device. I guess you put your hand on this mark. Beep, boop, pop, boop, beep. Why well, guess when you can try? Now to line my hand up with the outline. Don't. I think this thing is related to the case. Get your prints all over that, and the next thing you know, you'll be named a suspect. Uh, how can you be so cruel to a little girl like me? <laughs> I'm not buying those tears, Missy. <laughs> and then a door. That's a nice door you have there. Let's see. This door is... Where's that pamphlet? I lost it, and I had two minutes later. <laughs> Here we are. It's a door to the corridor that leads to launch pad one. We went through it earlier when we went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They said the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. This thing besides the door. This must be the fingerprint recognition device. Which reminds me, I think Prosecutor Blackwell talked about it at the trial. Yeah, the notion of a third party in launch bay was utterly absurd. Just <laughs> in the area from the lounge. One must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. Now, I mean, to state up front that there are pretty, pretty few people clear to do so. Oh, the yeah. victim, the defendant, and then the boss man. Yeah. Then, does this mean that the bomber's prints were verified by the system? But the number of authorized personnel was supposed to be really small. Voila! Fingerprint powder! I brought it just in case something like this came up. I found it at the office. I've just been itching for a chance to use it. Wow, way to think ahead. <laughs> now let's test the fingerprint recognition device and see what we can find. You got it. Now to sprinkle some here and a little over here there and... <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> just blow on it. <laughs> let's see what we have here. Okay. Oh, we got something. Uh, it's only a single set of prints. Uh, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> sure wish we could figure out whose prints these are. Although I doubt it'll be still a case to get the culprit's prints on the first try. Well, I'm willing 
can bet that Detective Fulbright has some fingerprint data. Right. And there's security footage of this door, too. Yes, here it is. It came up in the court the other day. It came well, up in court. <laughs> we should see the part of the footage just after this bit. In the court. <laughs> oh, because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let's ask the detective. But the mood he's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can find him again once we're all done with this room. And now the other thing. Eh, only one thing left. That's the wrong way. There's the window right there. What is this fucking window? Ooh, a oh, mirror. a mirror! How thoughtful of him to put one here. Thoughtful? <laughs> so the ladies can fix their makeup. One's appearance is just as important in space as it is on Earth, you know. I don't think that's the case. You never know when you're going to run into some other life form after all. Uh, I doubt anybody who thinks like that would ever become an astronaut in the first place. <laughs> it's a reason why I'm not one. <laughs> hey, gotcha. All right. I think now we're ready to go. Uh, bye and talk to Mr. the crime and then ask for let's learn the prince and then present security camera footage to the Fulbright. E all right. You know what? We're going to do that. Next time. We're actually relatively organized. I know, right? We're doing good. For now. <laughs> Just don't jinx us. <laughs>